Welcome to Praying Through the Psalter, a brief daily meditation upon the great 150 Psalms of Scripture. Today we turn in devotional number 88 to Psalm 89. Psalm 89. As we turn our Bibles to this Psalm, let me review for us the three chief ways that we interpret the Psalms. We say first that they are the prayers of the Lord to His people so that they can become his people's prayers back to him. Secondly, the Psalms teach us how to pray and what to pray for. And finally, every Psalm is messianic. It reveals the face and the person of the Messiah, Jesus our Lord. Psalm 89 is one of the longer Psalms in the Psalter, and it's all about the uh, Davidic kingdom, the, the covenant that God made with David and his lineage to be the king over the king in the uh, kingdom of Israel with the monarchy. And Psalm 89 becomes ultimately a lament because there's been a great disruption in the kingship. The king has been defeated and humiliated. This prayer would have been developed or could have been developed uh, any time in the period of Israel's monarchy from the time of David around 1000 BC to when finally the Babylonians came and destroyed Jerusalem around 587 BC. So over that four or 500 year period, uh, there were many times where it looked like the promises of God that he would, uh, that he would keep his covenant with the Davidic kingly line, that that might come to an end. And so this is a prayer of God, remember your covenant Remember that you promised us the kingdom and a king. Please help us. So Psalm 89 begins, really, there are really three sections. In verses 1 through 18, the psalmist prays in remembrance of all the great things God has already done for them, for Israel, for his people, for the psalmist. That's one of the great ways to start our prayers. We, we want to begin our prayers always by remembering what God has already done for us before we get into, well, Lord, this is something new I want you to do for me. That's the first part of the psalm. The second part of Psalm 89 begins in, verses, uh, begins in verse 19, where the psalmist then reminds God of how he entered into a covenant with David and with David's lineage to keep the king and the kingship uh, safe and secure with the covenant that he made with David. But then in verses 38 through the end of the psalm, the third part of this prayer is a great lament that there has been this threat against the king. The king himself has been defeated. The king is humiliated. And the psalmist cries out, please, Lord, remember your steadfast love and faithfulness. Please remember the covenant you have made with us. We desperately need you to restore the king. So Psalm 89, among all the other things it teaches us, it teaches us to pray to the Lord based upon the character of God. In other words, circumstances in life will always be changing. Some days will be great, some days will be terrible. We understand that. Circumstances are always changing. But what is changeless and what keeps our prayers founded upon strength and certainty is not is is to concentrate on the character of God, which never changes. So even as circumstances change, our prayers are always focused and centered and founded on the changeless character of God. And what is the character of God? Psalm eighty nine details at least two of the chief characteristics of the Lord, and that is His loyal love and His loyal faithfulness. Those things will never change. God is forever loyal in his love and his faithfulness. And so while Psalm 89 ends up being a great lament, it is not hopeless. It is not despairing. The psalmist is even in the time of the defeat and humiliation of the king. The psalmist is still confident. Why? Because he's basing his prayer upon the character of God. 
And then finally, brothers and sisters, Psalm 89 is very messianic because when we think about uh, this great sadness and mourning over the defeat and the humiliation of the king, immediately we think of the King of Kings, the Messiah, Jesus on the cross. It looks to the eyes of the world like, like death and Satan and evil have defeated and humiliated the Lord as he dies nailed, crucified to a cross. And so we cry out, Lord, please remember, we need the king. We need Jesus desperately. How could this happen? Please restore the king to us. And then comes the day of the resurrection, the third day, the first day of the week. And the king of kings is, is resurrected to new life. He ascends to the right hand of the father and he promises his kingdom is safe and secure eternally. Why? Because the character of God never changes. He is loyal. He has loyal love and loyal faithfulness to his promises. May all of our prayers be founded upon that hope. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and bless you with confidence and hope this day, dear brothers and sisters. In the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.